I'm sat with Steve and Rachel, the co-founders of the Company of Makers. Good afternoon, both. Hi, Steph. Hello. Steve, Rachel, we design and make products inspired by the British military's influence on pop culture. That's what your website says. What does it mean? So... One of the things that we do is that we try to create a greater understanding between military and civilian communities. And there's an awful lot more in common than people might immediately think. And one of the great ways to spark this conversation that everyone can get into is fashion, design, music, that kind of stuff. And if you think about it, British military uniforms have inspired so much of our culture. So you can think of things like... Uh, the Beatles and the Sergeant Pepper's bandsman jackets. You can think of the mods and the RAF roundel, trench coats, duffel coats, camo fabric. I mean, once you start to actually really look into this, the military is everywhere, not necessarily in the ways that we always think. So we're sat in the historic Hot Walls buildings here, uh, and certainly they are inspiring, but what inspired you to, to start this business? So I was running a social enterprise up in Liverpool, working with women who were recovering from anxiety and depression. And I've always had an interest in make, do, amend and uh, ingenuity. I wrote my fashion dissertation on what women wore in Britain during World War II. So I was teaching them in workshops how to unpick old vintage clothes and stuff from charity shops and sew it into something new and also to kind of shabby chic old furniture. And what I found in these workshops was complete strangers. Once they were sitting around a table, drinking out of vintage cups, doing stuff with their hands, they started to talk and it became a kind of therapeutic environment. Um, And Steve contacted me. Well, I was at a meeting at HMS Nelson in Portsmouth and learned about a fund called the Armed Forces Community Covenant Fund. And this was to foster a greater understanding between military and non-military communities and help those that may also be struggling on Civvy Street. I was aware of Rachel's work and basically picked up the phone and said, do you think your work that you do in Liverpool might work with uh, ex-service personnel in Portsmouth? To which she replied, Stephen, it will work with people. So that's kind of where it all started in a nutshell. Fantastic. Now, I know you've got many strings to your bow the one i personally am fascinated by is this the creating of soft furnishings from military uniforms that families bring into you not necessarily when the family member is no longer with us but how do you capture the emotion that family has from that uniform as you turn it into a soft furnishing i think it's it's how we approach what it means to people and the way we talk about it is that it's a celebration of someone's service. So, as you said, it's, you know, most of the people that we work with are still with us, but it's a way of continuing someone's service story after they've left. And you're not likely to have a uniform hanging up in your living room, so the idea it's made into something else, like a cushion or an apron, means it, as I say, continues the story of that person's service. And it's something that the family can treasure, you know, it becomes a family heirloom. We live in a society where so many things are throwaway and they've lost their meaning. So everything that we do has this massive amount of empathy tied up in it. And and for us, it's not just emotional for the family, it's emotional for us. It is such a privilege to do this and to put the uniforms back into service that we actually all end up having such a fantastic relationship and a really good giggle and the amount of stories that we are fortunate to hear um, about the people who wear and have worn the uniforms. It's just an absolutely massively uh, rewarding experience for everybody. And I think I'm right, it's not just naval, it's it's all or any military uniforms, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's all three services. Obviously we're in Portsmouth, which is the home of the Royal Navy. But I think in terms of which service, and they would consider themselves a part, is the most popular. It seems to be the Royal Marines that like a fancy cushion. Really? Okay. Indeed. And your customers are not just from the local area, are they, as well? No, not at all. I think that's that's quite a striking aspect of the business. That could be partly related to our location, because it's quite a communications hub. There's obviously, you know, Gunwolf Keys just around the corner. But 
I would say probably 70 to 80 percent of our customers are from outside the city and that can be a significant distance the furthest is australia i think we've sent anything wow <laughs> a former wren in fact yes wow. great story there but not enough time oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so we've talked about how you got started we've talked about how you came together from liverpool and portsmouth we've talked about the military uniforms but you go beyond that because your links with services go way beyond the furnishings and the items. Tell me a bit about the workshops that you, you run and support. The whole point of Company of Makers is that we exist to help veterans and their immediate families who are struggling to transition back into civilian life, no matter how long ago they left the forces. So the stuff we do in our workshops is to benefit the military community directly. So everything they make with us is theirs to take home and for them to treasure. And, you know, hopefully they've experienced a little bit of the camaraderie and banter that they often miss in the forces and learn new skills as well. It's all about making, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, I think that's a really, really important point, the camaraderie and the banter. I mean, when people join our workshops, they've already got something in common. That usually ends up being taking the mickey out of each other from all the different services. But taking I think the mickey out of me, usually. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> um, so... They have something in common and that bonds the team together initially and then that's how it creates the opportunities to actually have a positive impact upon people's lives. As Rachel said, when people start doing stuff with their hands is when they start to talk and then if there is any help that we can provide or other agencies, that's kind of when, when we work our magic, hopefully. And finally, every business should have a dream. What's, what's your dream for the next, say, two or three years? It's a bit of a running joke within the company of makers, but I would like a factory so I can dress up like a Victorian entrepreneur, stovepipe hat, monocle, I'm not allowed a cigar, and a, and a walking stick. But in all honesty, yeah. the idea of having, I think, some form of factory, I don't want to conjure up the idea of a sweatshop because that's not what we mean, but something that was also in like a historic monument like we're in at the moment, where we could actually make more items from, say, particularly from donations, because we're not able to take donations because of space. So I think that would be what we'd like to do in the future, would it not? Absolutely. And things like, you know, our one-off unique bespoke pieces, it would be amazing to sell them somewhere like Liberty. And then beyond, you know, like, for instance, Paul Smith, Cracked Japan. So I think we'd like to kind of go down that Anglophile route as well. And ultimately, which is the most important thing for us, is that, you know, we're based in the home of the Royal Navy. and We want to be the exemplar in how we look after our veterans in the UK. Steve, Rachel, thank you for today. And I was very proud to see you win the Startup Business of the Year Award at the recent Shaping Conference. Yay! I can see it proudly displayed here in the, in, the, in the shop. There's no fingerprints on that. She polishes it every day. Well, I there do. You go. Um, <laughs> but if our listeners are interested in the military uniform piece or the workshops or anything, what is the best way they can get in touch with you? Um, however they like, really, they can come into our studio. We're here Tuesday to Saturday, 11 till 5. Um, they can certainly give us a call or get in touch on our website. All that contact information is on our website at www.companyofmakers.com. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you, Thank you. Steph.